Thank you. So welcome all to our presentation, Storytelling Through Reports. My name is Raja Jasper. I'm currently a senior manager at the United States Financial Institution. I have over 10 years of experience in security, incident response, and forensics. My part-time, I am also a professor at Pennsylvania State University and also have a charity called Friends Charity where we give out scholarships to high school students who really need that money. In my free time, I uh, brew beer. Hey, my name is James Potter. I'm a principal engineer uh, working with Raja. Uh, I've been in cybersecurity for uh, about 12 years now, and uh, most of the time has been spent doing uh, forensics, and, uh, incident response, and threat intelligence. Uh, in my free time, I enjoy being a dad, so we travel a lot with the kids and do a lot of uh, attendance of Irish dancing when I'm not not doing cybersecurity work. So jumping into the, the presentation here, we we chose the subject of, of reporting. It's, it's not the most glamorous thing usually, but it's one of the most it's typically the most time consuming uh, portion of incident response. And it's often one of the components that is given the least amount of time for, for an incident responder to produce. And usually what we, we see after we've written these, these reports is they range from, from a report that's taken you an investigation that's taken several days to, to, to complete to something that's taken just a few minutes. Uh, and what we usually see is once these reports are done, they get handed to the people that were directly involved with the event, and then um, they usually don't see the light of day any, anymore. So one of our key goals was to, to evolve the handling of reporting. And what we wanted to do was add more of a narrative into the reports and making the material more engaging to the audience. So move slowly away from having um, your, your pure evidence-based reporting where it's it's it it ranges it looks like where the the content usually just has we were notified of anomalous activity we found the anomalous activity and we stopped the anomalous not anomalous activity and then sometimes we, we prevented the activity for the future right um but the reports don't usually go down that that who what when where and why of of uh of the giving the extra information on what kind of theories the responder had uh, what dead ends they ran to, what, what types of failures they had, what types of successes they had, and what rabbit holes an uh, incident responder usually experiences. Um, so as we were, we were talking about how to, to get some more engagement in, and this is previous to, to the pandemic, uh, we wanted to, to, to get more of the, the faces of, of the, uh, the responders and have it so more can be heard about them. So it's not just about a a metric of, of what you've responded to and like you know we've we've had we've had x amount of of, of alert type of alert type one and they they responded to these things we wanted to have more of that information around it and more knowledge share and to get people more more in front of of the the activity so long time ago before i got in cyber cyber security when i was studying in college i was originally starting to become a teacher. And I recalled a early childhood uh, creative writing technique called a story wheel. The story wheel is a utility usually used for younger kids that has pie pieces and um, a kid would, would color in the, the pieces to each of the, the pie to highlight the, the, key, the key events to the story they want to tell or if they were doing like a book report, uh, the key events that occurred in the story that they want to summarize. So while I was explaining this to, to Raja, the whole concept of behind a story wheel, it occurred to us that there's a, another similar framework um, that is leveraged by uh, a show creator called Dan, Dan Harmon. Um, the TV show that he, one of the shows that's very popular here in the US is called Rick and Morty. Um, and this, this framework that he uses, the show, the, 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 the show always, follows the same type of storytelling method. No matter which episode it is, the, the show goes through the same type of thing. And his, his uh, framework is called a, a, a story wheel, or sorry, story circle. So a story circle always goes through the same repeatable method of, of telling a story, so it makes it more relatable to the audience. It starts with you, goes through the cycle of need, go, search, find, take, return, and then you, you go through your change. So for an example, 
FI was going to tell us about like a everyday um, for an incident responder, like the everyday activity that you would go through like a single, single point in time, I would say you are the incident responder. You want to, the need is you want to increase your visibility of work. You, you, you spend, you face a piece of malware that you've never seen before as your go. You spend hours digging into the malware. You find new TTPs and indicators. You take by realizing that there's a big impact on, on discovering that the malware has impacted your environment and you went through a lot of effort to, to have it mitigated. You return with the, the, the event resolved and then you've, got, you've grown as an instant responder. So that's a really generic way of summarizing the story. But what we wanna do is for the rest of this presentation is walk everybody through how we, we took this journey of, of modifying our reports and adding more more than just a singular, like one event that we use a report for and, and use multiple templates. But the rest of this is gonna be following the same story circle and to take everybody through the journey of what we went through in 2020. So with that, thanks James. Uh, with that, you know, let's talk about the first one, the comfort zone. This is the pre-pandemic when we were all sitting in the office shoulder surfing, talking about different cases or events. Uh, it's easier, right, when you can go grab coffee or lunch and talk to your teammates or your leadership team about the incidents that happen. You can, whether it's, you know, in the elevator or walking down the hall, when there's a smaller incident or a case and there's a report that's needed to be written, you can just turn around, talk to your teammates and write that report. But when there's a bigger incident, everybody is in the same room or adjacent rooms can gather together and write out this report and collaborate together. We become too comfortable with what we are currently doing. So as an example, is we'll use James's example of uh, the malware. So if there's a malware event, you can talk to your teammates and you can resolve the event right there and then you don't have to pick up the phone and call many people so but as we're sitting there we get too comfortable with all the events that are happening we're just day in day out we're just getting too comfortable but as an analyst or as the leader we, we always desire for something new we want to get better on what we're doing instead of sitting there and talking about the same incidents so as we want to get better, we want, we want this something new. Is I want to, James, you want to, next slide. So as we're desiring for something new, this is, it can be called as a, a midlife crisis or, you know, a midlife analyst crisis. Uh, you want some excitement in your day. You want new trainings or you want vendor trainings without the marketing materials. You want technical team trainings. You want mentorship by your senior team members. You want a training path to move forward and move up in the organization. Most importantly, you want to know the direction your team is going and the project that's being worked on. So if you take that same malware example, would be like you want to de-obfuscate that malware, have a malware lab that you can play in. But as we're desiring for all this and we're you know in the zone of pre-pandemic, something happens. 2020 happened. And since 2020 happened, we know the pandemic happened and everything changed. We went from being at home, at work with all your teammates to being now in separate locations. So not only you have to pay 100% of your attention towards your home life and everything, that, the chaos that's happening at home, you have to do that same thing at work, you have to pay attention with everything that's happening. You gotta pay attention at work. That's where we don't know what's gonna happen. If your kids are crying, you gotta teach your kids. You know, you get into this mental stress. So what do we really need to do when we have this mental stress? Do we adapt to our mental stress or do we change ourselves? And this is, this is where we, we uh 
when we with the pandemic it accelerated our our desires to to get something in place because the information um traditionally within within a you know cybersecurity operations team the a lot of the knowledge is transferred through you know oral history so it's like if, if you can, if you can't really see things a lot of things are told through verbal stories so we wanted to really get that historical context back down onto paper and with everybody being virtual, we wanted, we needed to, and not just, not just our own teams. Like, so our, our teams, if you're, even if your own team last year was, was virtual, there, there's probably still components within your organization that were working in an office. And what happened last year is everything went virtual. So it changed, it put everything on its head of, of not just taking the normal uh, remote work that you have, um, in one way it took it so everything had changed that way so what we wanted to do was initiate um some change by by raising the gates and we we, we viewed getting those stories of of reporting into the as a way to raise the gates and we wanted to take reports and make them so it's not just um generic where it looks it does it reflects just the organization but we also wanted to reflect the the analysts work so that way when the, there there's ownership there when they they produce a report and it also has has their voice behind it um we view this as a way of also wanting to adapt to um improving the communication and not just using uh reports for for big events but also using them for some of the smaller smaller types of investigations yeah, it's taking, so how do we take our analysts and, you know, showcase the cool incidents that they're working on, you know, instead of just putting in the chat or before pandemic, just turning around and talking to your teammates about something cool that they're working on. How do we make them the hero of the story? So we really want to like vocalize that. So where our analysts that are working are the heroes of the stories that they're writing and communicating out. They're the ones that are going to be standing in front of the leaders presenting this. And the, the other way to that we, we view the, the use of reports is we want to be very similar to like what your traditional red teams produce where the analysts have seen seen the actual threat. So it's not a perceived threat that, that can happen from a threat briefing that can come from your intelligence teams or something that it's, it's something that's already happened and to do those burn downs with other other teams. But one of the key things too with inserting the, uh, the analysts into the story is we wanted to be able to write things, have have templates that they could follow that that allows the information to be at the level of the audience they're, they're presenting to. So one of the things we, we looked at was producing something that had a, a more of a cadence. So like looking at your target audience of, of your managers and your senior leadership. So we, we wanted to have more information out there that allows you to, we, we use the elevator speech style where if, if you're not familiar with that, it's, if you got on an elevator with, uh, with an executive or, or a senior leader, um, and you only had the time it takes you to get from, from one floor to the floor that, that that individual is going to, how can you, how can you convey to that person, um, what, what you did, what, what were, sorry, what happened, what we've done so far and what, what we're, we're working on already. So, so if they asked you, you can get that quick information out. So that, that made us, uh, we created a, a summary report. That's just a quick one pager that gets the summary of the incident out there. And we created cadences that, um, depending on the level of the event, establish a, a time frame in which those, that information can, can be delivered. And even the pre pandemic, right? Any of the incidents that are always worked on are usually bigger incidents where you have these formal reports, right, that you will still write even going through the pandemic of, you know, having the, the giant incident summary that has all the details, the detailed timelines, the screenshots, you know, the work that was performed for that incident and any of the gaps that are identified and how to remediate those gaps. But we want to start sparking that conversation between analysts or between even your day shift or night shift and mid shifts uh, to have this elevator styles reports or these one pagers. So if an analyst 
worked on an incident, they, if they annotate everything on what happened, the risk and what they're doing to mitigate the risk as the next analyst comes on board can always know what's happening, what was happening and what they need to do in their, in their shift. Plus this really helps with, uh, as you're onboarding new colleagues. So as you onboard new colleagues, they can go back and read through these reports to see the work that's being performed by the team and what type of incidents are being response, responded by the analysts. But then as you're writing these reports, right, you start taking ownership of your security posture. So you try to drive your own car. You know how to secure it because you're the owner of those reports, those cases that you worked on. The details that go within it, you're the one that is responsible to share that among your leaders. And one of the, the other thing with the with, uh adding more of the voice to the, the, the analysts from the reports is we want to, we want to establish more time for a skill of needing to have, uh, more, more creative writing, um, to be able to, to add what we're saying with the reports, we want, it's, it's adding more of the, the voice. So adding more, more, more narrative to it. So it's, if I was, if I was going to explain to you what was, what's happening, I can use a lot of analogies and make sure that it, it, it applies to the audience I'm giving it to. So now when something goes on, especially with us being virtual, it gives a point of contact so that person can be, is, they, 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 they have, they get, they get credit for the work they, they, they've worked on. Um, but the other portion of it now is that with having to have write more reports, there's more than just inserting information into if you're to have a case management system or something like that. It also means that you have to spend more time um, taking those notes while while we're, while you're you're doing an investigation because you don't know if if the investigation when you when you start it it's going to require a report. So it, it, we view it as a way of of helping with just improving that ability of taking notes during during a an investigation itself. Yeah, and this provides the accountability and the responsibility to the organization and makes the analyst the hero. So once we've we've established these these different these new type of, of templates that to follow and um, all the the um, extra work that's going to be it, it does it is a lot of extra work right so we're not getting rid of any of the work it's not it's not um, it's not taking away from it but what it is doing is it's it's creating that that knowledge a written written knowledge history of of what happened within your organization so. Back to what Raja was saying earlier, with with when we have onboarding, right? Um, you're now in a technically stronger place because when you onboard new new people to the team, you can give them a history of the organization. Um, you know, for uh, for within cybersecurity, um, I, I recall it's somebody saying in another presentation that traditionally everything is has been closed door and. By having more reports and getting it into more people's hands, it's trying to open up the doors there. So it's not just you pass something to a team, uh, the work gets done, and then and then uh, you know you don't hear about it later on. It's it's to give it's to help rise up people from that are new to the to the area, but also help help bridge that communication between your your business or with your customers or within your or even internally within your organization. So. Having more of that, those reporting, you return back to being technically stronger um, with all that information. Yeah, and this also takes you back to the, the slide that we talked about, desiring for something new, right? You can take these reports and you can go and cross train between teams or as you're shadowing different teams and learning new skills, these reports come in handy on the cases that you worked on and how it was written you get to add new things or remove it or adapt to something new, right? And then you can use these same reports that you are the heroes for 
to mentor junior analysts, which helps the whole organization as you're growing together as one team. It also allows you to start doing more burn downs with, with those uh, impacted or, uh, portions within your business or within uh, your customer base um, by taking that information and, and, and you can read it to them. And now you're also a point of contact. So that, that's, that's, this has been our, our, our main goal there is to get more involvement by not just having it where um, when something happens, if people go straight to the leadership, they can go straight to the people that are involved with the, the work itself. So with that, you know, we have like three templates, right? So we can take the, the one page right? the executive summary, the event summary and a detail report. The detail report is as your formal report that has every single nitty gritty detail in it. So the executive summary and the event summary. So the executive summary is that quick summary that you would provide to your leadership team of the, exactly like what happened that five, like same as what James said, if you're getting into an elevator with a leader for like say five or six floors, what are you gonna explain? That same concept will apply to the executive summary piece, like just a quick uh, overview, mitigation, and what are the quick next steps? The event summary template in this case is more internally within your teams or your sister teams. You know, when did it start? Who's the incident handler that worked on it? What's the location, your contact information, any, any pertinent detail on the host ID, the IP address, and your summary of findings. So what work that was done as the next analyst comes in and picks this up to do additional work, they'll have everything that they need to move forward. And you have the final, the detailed report that will have the full summary, the risks, any of the search term that you use, screenshots, your technical findings, timeline, and any of the gaps and improvements that will help with the next incident. So you, you may ask, um, how does this all apply to Story Circle? So what we wanna, wanna be able to do is have this, this framework here where as an analyst is going through something and they, they start the, this reporting process, they can lay out what it is they wanna cover in that report. So they can do a quick little fill in the blanks here for this, this out for this framework and then they can write about it. So you can cover the key points that you wanna have, establish that narrative that you wanna have behind your report. So it actually tells a complete story. Um, so we all know that some, some investigations go off in multiple directions. So you wanna make sure you can reel that back in and get those points across within the, the summary report from, from the work you've done. The other thing that it allows them to do is when, you, when I say you, the you doesn't have to be you yourself as the analyst. It can also be the component you're investigating. So if you're looking at like, let's say uh, back to the malware example, you can use, you can use the malware piece itself as, as the, as the you, you can take like a, you can take that piece of malware, turn it into the, the you into the whole story about that, that um, you as how the malware, um, what it did, how it acted, um, where it was going and all those type of, all those components of the actual activity itself. So it allows you to establish that narrative um, within there. So, so it, it gives a little more freedom to, to the incident responder when they're creating that report. Thank you so much for attending our, uh, our talk. If you have any questions, we'll be in breakout session to the speaker room. Also, if you need a copy of the template, you can reach out to James or my, myself, and we also posted our LinkedIn profiles there. All righty, sounds good. Thank you, Raja and James, uh, for the presentation.